And one of the most creative tools that Photoshop has is layer masks. Layer masks allow us to create just about any image we want to without doing permanent damage to the original image. This gives us unlimited ways that we can alter an image, try different methods without ever having to go back to start every time. Learning about layer mask, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Van Ryn, professional photographer, and I'm teaching you Photoshop from the very beginning. We're here on episode 10. Today, we're gonna to be working with layer masks. If you missed any of the episodes for the beginning in Photoshop, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can go start one of those classes and catch up. If you're looking for the whole series, look at my playlist under Photoshop for beginners. They're all listed there in order. Seldom do I do any changes to an image without using a layer mask. This workflow gives me freedom of creating whatever I want and allowing me to go back afterwards and continue the edit on the image without ever making permanent changes to the image. Let's look at what layer masks are and how they work. So I've got an image up here in Photoshop. It's just a simple background layer filled with red. Let's go ahead and do another one and we'll fill it with blue. So edit, fill, grab the color, pick blue, click OK. Click OK, and now we have a blue layer on top of a red layer. Turn the eyeball off and on, and you can see it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask. So let's go ahead and click down here. This is the icon for the layer mask, the third one from the left. Click on it, and now we can create a layer mask on any layer that we want. So let's go over to our paintbrush, and then we're going to paint inside of this layer. Now make sure when you're going to working on layer masks that, see how this layer is highlighted? We don't want to do that. We wanna highlight the layer that we're gonna be working on, and that's the layer mask that we're gonna work on. So not only is the entire layer need to be highlighted, you also need to highlight that layer mask. And usually it defaults to that, but occasionally you'll find you're off of it and you'll wonder why it's messing up. So let's go ahead and grab our brush. We'll use a nice sharp brush this time. We'll make it nice and large. And let's go ahead and click and now what we've done is we created black on this mask. So we've created a hole in the mask. So we can see through that hole into the layer below it. See that? We've, every time we click, we're creating a new hole in that layer to look through down into the layer below it. So that's simply how a layer mask works. So let's go ahead and refill this with white. And now we have our layer mask again. Let's make this a little larger and we'll click on it. And one of the cool things Photoshop did for us is that we have the ability to manipulate these layer masks a little bit. So we need to go into properties. This is a little signal for properties to get your properties up. Or if you need to go up into windows, pull down and make sure properties is checked. So let's go in here and at the top of this properties, Usually, whenever you're working on a mask, it's going to default to this, which is our mask layer. But just double check that, that it's on mask, because this is where you're going to have the control over it. So one of the things you'll see here is density and feather. So if we worked with density, if we turn the density down on this mask, we can see that we are fading the entire mask. We don't want to do that on this particular one. Let's leave that at 100%. But feather, for instance, we've already created this. Now we're going to feather that mask. And now we can make that mask softer than what we had. And you have the ability in the layer mask, if you want to have independent control of this mask, this is typically defaulted to link to this layer. But if you don't want it to link to this layer, click and undo the link. And now you have ability to grab the mask and move it around. Let me show you how this actually works. So we've just slipped an image right in between these two layers. Now we come back into this layer, click our layer mask, and now we're going to take our brush and let's go ahead and brush. We'll make a couple of orbs there. So you can see what we've done up here. Now, if we want to soften that mask a little bit, we can go to our feather and soft that, soften that a little bit. And where this is really convenient for us is we have the ability to unlink this and move this maybe to a different area. So let's go ahead and try that. 
grab our move tool. And now look, we can look around and find the area where we want this mask, but it's not moving the whole thing. Because if we had it linked, we would move the whole entire mask. But this just moves just the masking part, which is really pretty cool. So we've got an image up here. Let's grab a text layer and just write a word across it. So we have our text on top of the layer of the subject. And let's say we want to integrate the text with the subject. So let's go ahead and click a layer mask. I'll show you how easy this is to do. And we can zoom up a little bit. And now we can just take our brush tool and we wanna be able to see through this layer mask down to this layer. So what do we use? We use black, that's what creates the hole. And we just start painting. Now it looks like the text is going behind the subject. Now, if we wanna make this look exact, an easy way to do that is to come in here, go to our subject, and then go to one of our selection tools, make a nice selection of the subject. And then we'll come up here to our mask and we'll just, we'll hide that selection for now and hit our brush again. And we'll just go with a soft brush this time. Now we're just going to paint up to that edge and it's not going to go over anything that he's doing. There, look at that. goes right to the edge. And now that looks a lot more precise. So we have the ability to integrate this player in. Now if we wanted to take it a step further, here's how we would do it. Let's go ahead and select here. We'll make a new layer and we'll call this Shadow. So this is our shadow layer. What we're going to do is we're going to go in, zoom up a little bit, and we're going to grab a tone, a shadow tone. So we'll grab our eyedropper tool, go grab a dark section of this gray, click on it. That's going to put our new color down there. Then we're going to grab our paintbrush and we're going to paint under here as a shadow. Just like that. Now the text is creating a shadow on his arm. But again, it doesn't look quite perfect. So let's go, we know what to do here. We can go to this subject, click our subject, select subject, create a selection. Now when we do this, we're gonna make a layer mask. And when we click, watch what happens. It masks just out the person, and then the shadow is then left created into it. It's integrated into it. It looks like the text is creating a shadow on his arms. If you'd like to make that a little lighter, send the opacity down, whichever you like. It doesn't matter because we're controlling that layer in itself. Pretty slick stuff. Here's another image. Can do kind of the same thing. So let's do this. Let's make a new layer, and we'll just fill that layer with blue. That's a good blue. And now it's filled. But what we really want to do is we want to just affect the bird. So let's go ahead and turn this off for a second to see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and hit select and select subject. Now we've got a subject uh, selection of the bird. Now we come up here and we're going to create a layer mask. Now what we've done is we've created blue over the entire bird in this layer mask. So now we take our paintbrush and instead of painting in white, we're gonna paint in black and paint away the things that we don't want to be part of this blue. Let's come up here, let's go across his face. There we go. So now we've created kind of a bluebird instead of 
the oak titmouse, we're going to make it a blue titmouse, I guess. I just like to say the word titmouse. At any rate, so, we'll, so now we've created this. Now, one of the things we're going to get into is some of these blend modes, but suffice to say, today we're just going to come over here and we're going to do this at hard light. And that's going to create the blue and it's going to blend, but also give us some of the texture back on this. So in order for this to look real, we need to do a few little changes to our mask. So let's get our paintbrush. And if we're going to paint in black, watch what happens. If we paint in black, then that removes that. Okay. If we paint in white, then that adds to it. So we don't want to do that. We want to paint in black. And what we want to do is instead of painting in pure black, we're going to paint in a lighter shade of black. So let's go down to, let's say, 35%. And we're going to paint in black. And now when we paint, we're just, in every coat we put over it, adds more and more density to remove that entirely if we want. So if we want to use 100% for something like down here that we know we don't want to have any blue in, we can remove that at 100%. But we can also come back up here and do this at 35% or so and start fading in how this mask interacts with the, with the chest of this bird. And we create the levels that we want. Same thing happening up here. If we want to make this blue, but we don't want it too absurd, we can start painting and let it fade in up there. It's a great way to mess with your birding friends to go in and start changing the color of birds and say, hey, hey, what kind of bird is it? I saw this in my backyard. What is it? It's always very entertaining. So you can then change the opacity, obviously, of this entire layer to add to how much blue you want to add to it. And you can make it look fairly realistic and really simply, we just added a color and then we use the layer mask to work with it and fade it in and make it the way we wanted it to look. If you're enjoying these free classes on learning Photoshop, take a moment to hit the like button, then hit the subscribe button and remember to ring that little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. I have a lot more videos coming in this series, so you won't want to miss it. Let's get back to it. Layer masks are probably the perfect tool for doing composites. When you're adding images on top of images and you're compositing to make a new image, layer masks are the way to go. So let's check this out. We got a picture of a rock wall here. And then we just have this picture of a guy that I cut out from another picture. We want to put him behind the wall. So how do we do that? One of the best ways to do that is to create a selection. So let's go ahead and cut that. Come over here and let's say we're going to do go take the lazy route and we're going to go sky and we'll select the sky and invert that shift command I shift control I now we've selected everything here and we go ahead and make our layer mask come over here we hold down the option key because we want this to be black and then we fill it now as we look here we'll see that that selection from the sky wasn't great See, it was kind of patchy. And the reason for that is the tones that are on these rocks are very similar to the tones in the sky. So that really isn't a great way to make a selection. So let's get rid of that. Delete that layer mask. Now the way to make a selection, as we've already discussed in one of the earlier episodes, when you want to make a really good selection, it's probably best to use the pen tool. But it's very tedious when you think about it. If we have to do the pen tool clear across this whole rock wall, we don't. We only need it for these two sections. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. This is just a sample layer. Grab our paint paintbrush and we'll just paint in, we'll paint in a different color like fuchsia or something. So we can just draw a line straight down here and we'll draw a line straight down here. So that means that we only really need to make the selection inside of those two lines. So let's get rid of him and zoom up and grab our pen tool and start making a selection. There's our pen selection. So all we're going to do is we don't need to go any more outside these fuchsia lines. So we can get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. We can just delete that and we'll bring this back up. And we need to make that into a selection. We know how to do that. 
So we've got an active path here. We know how to make a selection out of that. We can just hit in the Mac, we do command return and that'll make it a selection or on the PC you can use control enter and that'll make it into a selection. So we see the selection that we have here. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a layer mask under this. So let's click on the layer mask. And before we do that, we always like to hit the option key because we wanna make this a black mask. Hit option and click. And then we've created the mask. We've only created in the area that we need. And you can see that we have him behind the mask. If we wanted to move him, we would move, he would move the mask with him. So let's undo that. Let's unclick this and let's see if we want to move him around a little bit. We can do that because he's independent of the mask. So we have an image up here of a woman riding on a bike. It's a nice still shot. So let's go ahead and copy that. We know how to do that with Command J. We're going to copy that layer. And on this layer, we want to put a filter on it. So let's go to Filter and we're going to go to Blur and we're going to Motion Blur. And that puts a motion blur over the whole image. And you can control how much blur you want. We'll get into filters in another episode. But suffice to say, for now, we're just doing a little bit of motion blur on this image. So you can see what we've done here. One file has motion blur on it. And the other one doesn't. So let's go ahead and now create a layer mask. So we're going to create a layer mask here. And what the layer mask did here, it defaults to white. So that means that we want to show entirely what's up here until we start cutting holes in this. So let's undo that and let's do a layer mask. But this time on the Mac, we hold the option key and on the PC, we hold the alt key and we click the layer mask and it puts up a black layer mask, which is really helpful for us in this image because we're only gonna paint a small amount of this. So we don't wanna have to deal with all of this. So let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit. grab our paintbrush. Now remember on our colors, we default, when you hit D, it goes to the default colors, white over black, and then X will change those colors. So you will want to go back and forth between those colors. So you want to make sure you know the shortcut. X changes the colors and D defaults those colors back. So we're going to paint in not black, but we're going to paint in white. We hit the X key, get back to white. And now we take our paintbrush and right now we're at 36%. So let's just do 100% so we can see what we're doing. And we paint around the back edges of her because this is the edges that would be blurring, right? If she's riding fast by us, we want, we want the tires to be blurred. We probably should blur these spokes because spokes wouldn't be still in that kind of a shot. So let's go ahead and blur those. And of course, you can do these in any level of layers that you want. We're doing it all in one layer, but you might do a separate layer for the spokes and a separate layer for the hands and so on and so forth. But we'll just do it like this for now. We'll make sure that's blurred. Maybe the bottom of her pants are blurred. Now what we've done is we've created an image where, okay, her hair is blurred. Now you can see that we've just blurred part of her or different parts. Anything that would be moving might be blurred. Like we might take the, uh, the part here of her sleeve that would be flapping in the breeze. Same thing, that might be something that would be blurred. So you can come in and blur the things that you want to create a motion type of a look. And it's a pretty simple process. You create a layer, do whatever it is you want to do to that layer, and then create a layer mask and apply it to wherever it is you want to apply it. So I use layer masks all the time on just about everything I do. So I think you're going to like using them as well. If you have any questions about some of the topics I've covered, feel free to leave questions or comments below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, you can always reach me via email at terry at imagelight.com if you'd rather contact me that way. Next time, we're going to get into filters and show you a lot of different things that filters can do to your images to really make some creative improvements. All right. See you next time.